CompTIA A+, Core 2, Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 2.4 Explain Common Social Engineering Attacks, Threats, and Vulnerabilities. Threats According to CompTIA, a threat is anything that has the potential to cause harm to a system, network, or data. These threats come in many forms, from attacks that overload a system, to malicious insiders with access to sensitive information. We have even covered one type of threat already, social engineering. Now, let's dive into some of the more technical threats that IT professionals must be ready to handle. Let's start with a denial of service, or DOS attack. This is a type of attack in which the attacker seeks to make a machine or network resource unavailable to its intended users. There are many ways a DOS attack can be launched. These tactics include causing a power outage, a hardware failure, or even a disruption to network connectivity, but the most common scenario involves bombarding a company's web server with so much traffic that it becomes unavailable to the general public. In other words, the attacker overwhelms the server with traffic by flooding it with requests for resources. In turn, the server can't handle all the requests, and as a result, it crashes or slows to a crawl, leaving legitimate clients frustrated. Now, if a DOS attack is a solo mission, then distributed denial of service, or DDoS attack is an all-out party, except the only one having fun is the attacker. In this attack, it's not just one computer trying to crash the system. Instead, there are multiple attackers or multiple devices controlled by the attacker, working together, to carry out the attack. Think of it as a global flash mob, but instead of people dancing in unison, you've got hackers coordinating their attacks to bring a website to its knees. Now, here's where it gets interesting, those computers involved in the attack aren't always participating willingly. Some of these devices may be part of what's called a botnet, a vast network of compromised computers that have been infected with malware, allowing attackers to remotely control them. These infected machines, often referred to as zombies, execute commands sent from a remote attacker. The owners of these compromised computers are usually unaware that their devices are being used as part of a large-scale attack. Instead, they are most likely scrolling through their social media while their computer is out wreaking havoc on some poor web server. The beauty of a DDoS attack, at least for the attacker, lies in its sheer volume. By using so many different devices from around the world, they make it much harder to stop the attack. The distributed nature of the attack also means that the targeted server can quickly become overwhelmed, unable to keep up with all the bogus requests, causing legitimate users to be locked out. And while all this is happening, the attacker sits back and watches the chaos unfold, with the zombie army doing all the heavy lifting. Next up, we've got the mysterious zero-day attack. This is the one that keeps security professionals up at night. A zero-day attack takes advantage of a software vulnerability that hasn't been discovered yet by the software developers, meaning there's no patch or fix available at the time of the attack. Think of it like finding a secret backdoor to a building before anyone else even knows it exists. By the time the developers release a patch, the damage could already be done. Moving on, we have spoofing, which is a type of attack, in which, an individual, or system, masquerades as another by falsifying data. Essentially, the attacker pretends to be someone or something they're not. It's the digital version of wearing a disguise, except instead of fake mustaches, we're talking fake IP addresses, email headers, or websites. This digital form of impersonation is designed to trick you into believing that a message or connection is legitimate, so you hand over sensitive information or interact with a compromised system. Whether it's an email that looks like it's from your boss or a website that mirrors your bank's login page, spoofing is all about deception, and it's one of the key tools attackers use to infiltrate systems and steal valuable data. An on-path attack, formerly known as man in the middle, is an attack where an attacker positions themselves between two parties to secretly intercept, monitor, or alter communications. Picture this, you think you're having a private conversation with your bank's website, but the attacker is sitting in the middle, eavesdropping on the entire exchange. They can intercept your data, inject malicious code, or even alter the communication without either side knowing. Next, we have the brute force attack. This is an authentication-based attack where the attacker systematically tries to uncover a password by guessing one password at a time. 
It's essentially the digital equivalent of trying every key on a keychain until finding the one that unlocks the door. In a brute force attack, the attacker doesn't rely on clever tricks or social engineering. Instead, they depend on sheer persistence, attempting every possible combination of letters, numbers, and symbols until they succeed. While it may sound tedious, computers are built for this kind of task. They can attempt thousands, even millions, of combinations in a short time. If your password is something weak like, password123, the attacker could gain access very quickly. That's why strong passwords, multi-factor authentication, and account lockout policies after several failed attempts are essential. Without these protections, a brute force attack is like giving a determined thief a box of keys and unlimited time to unlock the door. If brute force is about trying every possible key, then the dictionary attack is about trying the most common ones first. The attacker uses a pre-compiled list of words and guesses your password based on that. If your password is something simple, well, you're not going to be safe for long. Now, not all threats come from external hackers. Some of the most dangerous attacks come from the inside. An insider threat is a security risk that originates from within the organization. Typically, this involves an employee, contractor, or business partner who has legitimate access to the organization's data or systems. This individual may misuse their access, either intentionally or unintentionally, to cause harm, steal sensitive information, or sabotage systems. These threats are particularly dangerous because insiders already have access to sensitive information and systems, making it much easier for them to wreak havoc. Okay, time to get a bit more technical with our next attack type, structured query language, or SQL injection. In this type of attack, the hacker inserts malicious code into a SQL query in order to manipulate a database. Imagine you've got a login form, where a user enters their username and password. Instead of entering valid credentials, the attacker might inject some specially crafted code into the form's input fields. That code could trick the database into thinking that it should bypass authentication altogether, allowing the hacker to gain unauthorized access to sensitive data. SQL injection attacks can be incredibly damaging because they can target the core of a system, the data. Once inside, the attacker might be able to view, modify, or even delete critical information. In some cases, they could even gain complete control over the database. The best defense against SQL injection is input validation. This involves making sure that only the correct type of data, such as text for a username or a string of numbers for a phone number, can be entered into form fields. By restricting what can be entered, you can block attackers from inserting malicious code and prevent it from being executed against your database. Last up on our list of threats, we've got cross-site scripting. This attack takes advantage of vulnerable websites and involves an attacker injecting malicious scripts into web pages viewed by other users. These scripts run in the victim's browsers and can steal sensitive data like cookies, session tokens, or even trick the user into performing unintended actions. This attack works by sending arbitrary characters in a web page request, allowing the attacker to sneak harmful scripts into the web page's code. When other users load the page, the malicious script runs in their browser, usually without them knowing. For instance, an attacker might insert a script that steals cookies or session data from users visiting the page. This could give them access to the user's account or other private information. Like SQL injection, the best defense against cross-site scripting is to validate user inputs, making sure any data entered into a form or URL doesn't contain harmful code. By validating inputs, you can prevent attackers from injecting their malicious scripts and protect users from unauthorized access or data theft. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.